Good morning class. This is Topaz tutorial. Um, we do tutorial for under level students across all university in Nigeria. But we are currently based physically um in University of Ibadan. So um we are on dimension and this is the second part of dimension, which is homogeneity. So homogeneity homo means same, okay. Uh, when you talk of homogeneity, we mean um, in the aspect of dimension now. means that dimension of um, of a particular side is equal to the dimension of another side. Okay? So, homogeneity means same. Okay? When something is homogeneous, it means it's same. Okay? So, now we have rules of homogeneity when we are talking about dimension. Now, the first rule says... That dimension of all terms written in both sides are equal. Actually, today is going to be a very, this class is going to be a very long class. So, I want you to grab your popcorn or if you feel tired, you can just pause it and then continue to wash it. It's going to be a long class. Okay, now, the first rule is dimension of all terms written in both sides are equal. That means... A plus B equals to C plus D. Now, if you have, if you say something is equal, like okay, let's say A A is equals to B, that means dimension of A is equals to dimension of B. That's what homogeneity means. When you say A A which is the left side equals to B which is the right side, that means dimension of A equals to dimension of B. So if you say A plus B equals to C plus D, that means dimension of A is equals to dimension of C and equals to dimension of D. Or if you say dimension of B now, also equals to dimension of C and dimension of D. So what we are saying is, for, them, for the first rule, the dimension of the left side of individual quantities. Now, it's not addition of it now. The dimension of individual quantity on the left side must be equals to dimension of individual quantities of the right side. So don't miss it like I'm saying. I'm not saying dimension of A plus B equals to dimension of C plus D. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying dimension of A equals to dimension of C and dimension of D, okay? And why also dimension of B equals to dimension of C and also equals to dimension of D. So I'm not saying addition of dimension of A plus B equals addition of dimension of C plus D. Please take note of that. I'm not saying that. I'm saying the individual quantities in left side, the dimension is equal to the individual quantity in the right side. That's the first rule. Okay, that means dimension of the left-hand side must be equal to dimension of the right-hand side. But it's not the addition or the subtraction, it's the individual quantity that we meant that I meant here. Now, the second one is very, very important if you want to solve question on that uh, on this particular subtopic, which is homogeneity. Physical quantity added or subtracted have the same dimension. So if you add two physical quantities together or you subtract them from each other, that means they have the same dimension. This is very, very crucial. You need to know this. When you can add two things together or subtract it from one another, that means they have the same dimension. Like now, look at, let's go to this first, this example here that we, this example here. A plus B equals to C plus D. That means if you can add A plus B together, that means A and B have the same dimension. So if you can add C plus D, that means C and D have the same dimension. Now look at this a plus b minus c equals to zero that means a b and c have has the same dimension why because you can add them and subtract them from each other we add a to b and we subtract b from c that means a b c have the same dimension this second point is very very crucial as also first point is crucial but second point is really really needed for our calculation so um the third one this way, just to sensitize you a little bit, okay? A formula may be dimensionally correct, but physically wrong. Um, yes. But any formula that is physically correct is always dimensionally what? Correct. So, we'll give example here. S equals to UT plus AT square. S equals to UT plus AT square. What do we mean here? Now, if you look at this dimension, I'm going to still solve it for you. Okay, let's let's go to let's go to okay. Now, look at it. 
s equals to u t plus a t square. Now, the dimension of s based on our class, we know it's l. Okay, u t does u is velocity, which is l t minus one times t. So it's also l. Okay, um, plus a t square. That's l t minus two. That's what t square. This all cancel this. This also was plus l. So you can see that this thing is dimensionally correct. How does it? L is dimensionally correct. Remember our first rule. What does our first rule says? Our first rule says that that dimension of all time written in both sides are equal. That means individual dimension are equal. Because if you can go back here, you see that l here equals to l plus l so it's correct and i said if you can add dimension together we add ut we add ut plus 80 square that's that ut is l 80 square is l the dimension so it's it's this this equation this equation fulfill the dimensional rule that we have here to the dimension the first dimension is that the left hand side dimension i mean remember i said this individual quantity of the left side must be equal to individual quantity of the right side you can see that that is correct here. Yeah. It's very correct. L equals to L plus L. Because it is correct. And also, the second one is that physical quantity added or subtracted have the same dimension. You can see that we added UT plus ET square. And they have the same dimension. So this thing is physically correct. It's, uh, sorry, it's dimensionally correct. But it is not physically correct. Why? Because the formula itself, the formula itself is what? S equals to UT plus half ET square. This half is what make it physically correct without the half it is not physically correct okay so this first aspect of this s equals to ut plus it is square it is dimensionally correct but not physically correct why because it doesn't have half you know s equals to ut plus half it is square okay so um if you want to look at s equals to, what's the dimension of s equals to ut plus half it is square okay let's go back let's go back okay now Assuming we write, I write s equals to ut plus half a t square. What's the dimension? S is L equals to what? Ut is also what? L based on what we did. Plus, remember half. When we, when we are talking about type of dimension, where does half fall under? If you follow the class from the beginning, half fall under non-dimensional constant non-dimensional constant so half does not have dimension so we don't include it normally so 80 squares also l so this thing is dimensionally correct and physically correct but the first one which is s equals to ut plus a t square it is it is dimensionally correct Dimensionally correct, correct, but physically, physical is not correct. So it is dimensionally correct, but physical is not correct. But this one is both what dimensionally correct, dimensionally correct, physically what correct. Okay, so. This is just what I want to know. What I want you to know in the third aspect. Okay, so um, let let me just uh let's just do something to this by doing some questions so that you can see how things how we can use this rule to answer these questions. Okay, the first question is v equals to a plus b t. Find dimension of a and b. If v is velocity and t is time. Okay, so um. Let me so v equals to a plus b t. Hmm. Now v is we know that v remember the dimension of left hand side must be equal to the dimension of what remember I don't see the addition individual dimension of the left side must be equal that thing is very important that crucial statement individual dimension of the left side must be equal to individual the individual dimension of the right side. So the left side is L T minus one. That's the dimension of velocity. 
So, because V equals to L to minus 1, you know that your A2 has to be L to minus 1. Because individual dimension of the left side must be equal to what? Individual dimension of the right side. So, your A is also what? L T minus 1. Okay? Now, plus this BT must be also equal to this L2. Okay? This BT must also be equal to what? Because individual dimension of the left side must be equal to individual dimension of the right side. That means V must be equal to A and V must be equal to what? BT. Okay? That's the first rule. Now, another rule, if you don't want to use that one, since you said A plus BT, that means the dimension of A must be equal to the dimension of BT. You remember the second rule said that if you add two dimensions together, the dimension is the same. So for A, now if you are looking for the dimension of A, that one is very simple. That's L minus 1. Okay, I've got the dimension of A. What is the dimension of B? Because we add A and B to A and B T together, you should know that they have A and B T, A and B T have the same dimension. Okay? Or if you don't want to use that, since we said individual dimension of the left side must be equal to the individual dimension of the right side, then this dimension of A, V, is equal to dimension of A, and dimension of V is the same as dimension of what? B, T. So you can say L, T, minus 1, equals to what? B, B, T. Okay, now, B equals to what? L, T, minus 1, over what? Over t. So b equals to l t minus 2. So now your a is l t minus 1, or your b is l t minus 2. So in this formula, normally, if you want to, if you don't know this formula, but we know the formula that the formula is v equals to what? Our a is u, which is the same as initial velocity plus what? a plus a. Sorry plus a t plus a t so a is not writing so our a is you know is acceleration is l t minus 2 and u is a so we need to know that but if you don't know it you can use this thing to get the dimension so we have got it for a we've got it for b so that's just an application of the formula of the rule sorry um so let's go to the second aspect um Second one says that S equals to B plus C over M. While S is displacement and M is mass, find the dimension of B and C. This is very simple. Using the same rule. So, um, come here. X equals to B plus C over M. They said S is in, S is, S is in meter. So, the dimension of S is L. Abi? Now, if the dimension of S is L, you know that remember what we said individual dimension of the left side must be equal to individual dimension of the right side that means dimension of s is same as dimension of b and same as dimension of cm just like what we did last time so if s is l which is in meter which is l that means your b will also be what l your b will also be l so dimension of b is l okay and also your s equals to what c over m dimension of m is big that's mass that's big m so you can see your s equals to okay okay your c sorry. so dimension of s is l so um you can see l equals to what c over m so your c equals to m l minus one i can say c right here, right here m l minus one this is very simple sorry what am i say minus one sorry m l there's no minus sorry so Sorry, this ML, there's no minus one there. So, um, what I'm saying here is that you can see your C is what? ML. 
Okay, so it's simple. And why your B goes to F. So it's very, very simple. It's something that you need to know. So let's go to the next question. Now, the next question says P equals to 40 over R. Where T is surface tension and R is radius. Find the dimension of P. Okay. Um, let's come here. So um, P, P equals to 40 over R. So T is surface tension. Surface tension is force per unit length. Okay. So force per unit length, force is ML T minus 2 over L. L cancel L. So it goes to M T minus 2. That's the surface tension. Okay. So um let me just have this off. Okay, so um, now, now you would, we said our surface tension, which is T here, equals to what? M T minus 2. Okay, so your P, your P, it should be free forward. Now, your P can see four. What is what is four? What's category of four? Four is also what non-dimensional what constant, so it doesn't have dimension. So you can remove it. It's now be what m t minus two over what's r. R is what l. So your P goes to m l minus one. T minus what? 2. Now, in this case, okay, look at it. P can either be power or pressure. Okay. P can either be power or pressure. Now, in this case, what is P? So, what is P, guys? So, P here is what? Pressure. Because pressure is force over area. And this is the dimension of pressure. ML minus 1, T minus 2. So, we should be able to um, know this. It's very important. Another thing I want to state here, which is very important that you need to know, is that you don't. We we'll still do a question, and I want to see. You don't basically just um, say, okay, this because if I can write y equals to m a. What's the dimension of y? So, okay, do you understand? Or I can say y equals to force. I don't need to use, I can say y is equal to force, do for the dimension of m. So I don't need to say f equals to ma. Can I use any alphabet? In dimension, you can use any alphabet. You don't need to necessarily use the formula. You understand? So don't just see like, if you see y, you say, ah, it's not force, so it's force. But we just use any alphabet. So don't have it in your mind that you can, I can say p equals to f over g. Look for the dimension of g. If I, say, if I tell you that p is pressure, and F is what? Force. If you know that G will be A. Do you understand? But I'm not right A there for you. So it's not necessary that I give you the alphabet of the, the, the real formula. You can change the value. I can change um, distance from S. I can use Z. Doesn't matter. What matters is you getting your own. I don't know if you understand, Sha, but getting your own stuff. Now, um, the last one here. Is y equals to a sine k as minus w t. This is very important. Um, y equals to a sine k s minus what? W t. That took to look for the dimension of k. Now, and they give us that y. They give us y is displacement. Okay, S is position, A is amplitude, W is angular, angular velocity, and T is time. So, Y is displacement. What is the dimension of displacement? 
the angle of dis displacement is L. We all know that. So, and now, look, for, look, let's look at where this formula is coming from. It's coming from y equals to a sine theta. I remember what, what, what I told you. I told you that any angle or sine of an angle is dimensionless. So when I say something is dimensionless, remember I don't say dimension is, is zero. I'm saying the dimension is one. That means it is dimension is m l m naught l naught t naught. So this one is equals to what one. So now any angle or sine of an angle, any trig trig function is dimensionless. Any trig function is what dimensionless. So in this case now, if you want to look at this, so if every trig function is dimensionless, that means everything here is one because Remember in our dimensional rule, the left eye side must be equal to what? The right side. If this one is L, that means your A has to be what? L. So amplitude is really L anyway. We know amplitude is in meter. But even if you don't know amplitude is L, since you know that your Y is in mid, is in length, the dimension is L. Because this sine theta is dimensionless, it's 1. A times, A times 1 is what? A. You understand? So the dimension of amplitude is L. So anything here must be equal to 1. Anything here must be equal to what? 1. Okay. Now, I want us to be patient here because I want you to see some certain things. I want, to, I want us to be patient. Don't let us rush. So you can do this thing in two ways. Now, everything here must be equal to 1. That means, that means, um, KS. Okay, must be equal to what? Must be must be able to cancel each other. KS must be able to what? Cancel each other because everything there must everything this side KS minus WT must not exist. So KS must be able to cancel each other, while WT must also be able to cancel each other. So like look at look at WT now. Let's before we go to KS, look at WT. WT is KT minus what? 1 times t. t minus 1 times t will give you what? t minus 1 times t will give you 1. They will cancel each other. Okay. So, now, ks must also cancel to give you what? 1. ks must cancel to give you 1. Remember, we are saying that any trig function is dimensionless. Trig function is not only angle alone, any trig function is dimensionless. I don't remember to tell you that in one of the rules that I said. Now, in this case, now your ks has to be one, too. So, if your s, we know that s is s is l, what would make this thing one? What will cancel l? That means your k has to be what l minus one. Your k has to be what? L minus 1. So L minus 1 times L will do what? Will cancel. So in this case, the dimension of k, dimension of k here is what? L minus 1. I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about. When you have ks minus wt, and what is in front of it is in front of it is sine. Any three function is dimensionless. That means everything has to be 1. So this one has to be 1. And this one also has to be what? 1. So you can see angular velocity is t minus 1 times t. It cancels. Now, if s is l, so k has to be what? l minus 1. Okay, that's one way of doing it. That's one way of doing it. And also, why must ks and minus. Why must, why must dimension of ks be 1 and dimension of w has to be 1? Remember when you said when you add two things together or when you subtract, the dimension has to be equal. So if WT itself is dimensionless, you know that KS also will be what? Dimensionless. Even if you don't know that one before. If WT is dimensionless, you know that KS also what? Dimensionless. So but another formula that we can use to get our K actually is um we know that K equals what? From our physics knowledge, 2 pi over what? Lambda. Okay, lambda is a meter which is length. So K 2. What, what, what category of dimension is 2? That's why you need to go and watch my earlier videos on dimension. You have to know the category of what 2 fall under. 2 
fall under um, non-dimensional constant too. Also pi, remember, pi also fall under what? Non-dimensional constant. So you have to go and watch those videos again so that you can understand. So 2 pi fall under non-dimensional constant. So it doesn't have dimension, so we can do it with it. So that's one, okay? Over what? What's your lambda? Lambda is a meter, which is L. So your K equals to what? L minus 1. So you can do it this way if you want to do it this way. But based on that formula that I was given, A sine WT, WT minus KS, or KS minus WT, your K is what? By doing that, is L minus 1. So that's how you can do this question. It's very important. You can do it like that. So um, let's do another question. Another question that is not that is not here. Let's do another question. I don't know if I have that question here. Okay, so let's look at the dimension. Dimension of okay, let's look at these questions. It's not that bright, but let's look at it. Now, v equals to square root of p plus 1 over n over s. Given p is pressure, v is velocity, find dimension of n and s. So, um, let's do this. Okay. v equals to p. So, square root of p. Plus, sorry, plus 1 over n, plus 1 over n over x. So, say we should look for the dimension of what? n and x, if p is pressure and v is velocity. So, in this case now, looking for the dimension of this, they have given you p to be pressure. Then also, remember our rule, our rule, if you add or subtract two dimensions, they have the, if you add or subtract two quantities, that means they have the same dimension. So you don't need to do like, now P plus 1 over N must have the same dimension. Okay? They must have the same dimension. So if P is pressure, that means pressure is, pressure is force over area. Which is M L T minus one over L square, which is equals to M L minus one T minus sorry this T minus two T minus two. So pressure is M L minus one t minus 2 that's pressure for you so um so pressure pressure is m l minus 1 t minus 2 so equals to because the dimension of something that you have together must be equals okay equals to 1 over n okay so in this case now your n your n will now be equal to what 1 over m l minus 1 t minus 2 okay so your n will be what m minus 1 Okay, L T two. So that's your N. That's your N. M L minus one. L T two. Okay. So now let's look for X. To look for S, remember, we are not saying, we didn't say that if you divide or subtract, if you divide or multiply something, 
the dimension will be the same. No, we said if you add and subtract, we don't say divide or something. So we have to look for it. If you want to use look for s, then let's open the bracket. It now be what it will be v square equals to p plus one over n. Over, over n so divided by x I've opened the bracket now so in this case now our x remember now this one has the same dimension so p and 1 over n they have the same dimension which is the same dimension of pressure don't forget that we are looking for n that's why we inverse p the, the other time but p plus 1 over n, because you add them together, they have the same dimension. So, what you just do is, your s now will not be what? The dimension of p, because they have the same dimension, it will be ml minus 1 t square. Okay. Over, what's v? l t minus 1. Okay, please. I want you to note this P is ml minus 1 t square, that's pressure. So it will be the same dimension as 1 over n2. So that's why we don't, if we just say ml minus 1 t square plus ml minus 1 t square, it's the same. It's the same. So now coming here, let me just let me create more space. Let me create more space. So in this case now, so your S equals to now M L minus one T two okay over L square T minus what two okay t minus two so now so this one is minus sorry minus two so minus here so now let's wrap this off So now your s will now be what m l minus one minus two that's m l minus what three so t minus two minus minus two that's t minus two plus two so it will cancel so your s will be what m l minus three so it's very simple the way we get um, our n we don't need to use the square root you can see you don't need to use the square root or anything to get your n because normally if you follow the rules p plus 1 over n normally they have given us the dimension of p so if dimension of p is m l minus 1 t minus 2 that means your 1 over n this 1 over n was because to dimension of p so then look for n you look inverse inverse uh inverse of one of if inverse of p will give you what your n so you don't need to use the square root but if you're looking for the s because the s is not added or subtracted it's just divided or it's only divided or multiply you do it normally you don't you don't do shortcut like with this shortcut now because in exam you can't just be saying you want to calculate you now you can get it if you still go and square and all that but you'll be wasting time because there's no if especially you are doing fcq exam you have to be very fast so that's how you get this stuff so let's let's move to something else so another one is um, p equals to a minus t square over bs. So p is pressure, t is time, s is displacement. Find dimension of a. Now in this case, we we'll look for dimension of a and b so that we can do everything completely. Okay. Now p equals to a minus t minus t square t square over 
B S. And they say the dimension of P, P is pressure. Now P, P is pressure. Pressure. And why? S is displacement. I'll just write this. I will not waste time. T is time. T is time. Okay. So next we should do dimension of A. This is very simple. Now that thing simple. A is minus from T square. So you don't need to look for since that we know the dimension of T is time. Okay. T square. T is time, sorry. The dimension of T is big T. So A because it's subtracted. And A equals to T square. That means A equals to what? T square. Very simple. Because the dimension of T, you can subtract it. Remember of our rule. If you can add or subtract something, it has the same dimension. So A and T A and T are the same dimension. That means these two are the same dimension. And this one, the set this one is time. So the dimension of time is what T and this is T square. So A is also what T square. Okay. Now so knowing that A is equal to T square, you can still get B. Okay. So, so, um, B equals to A minus T square over what? P S. Okay, so P is pressure, which is force over area. I don't want to do it again. All right, I'll just write it out. So, and you know that everything here, because they are so added and uh, they are supplied from each other, is what T square. Everything here is what T square. A is T square. Y minus T. So all dimension here is what T square. If you can add or subtract something, the dimension is equal. We know that dimension of t square uh, of t square times times square is big t square. So that means a is same thing. A is also also, also equals to what t square. So total dimension here is t square. So b equals to what t square over what's pressure? Pressure is m l minus one t minus two times what what s s is l. Okay. So let me create a space. So what we do, what do we do now? What do we do? Um, okay. So B now equals to T T square over that's M L minus one that's L, that's gone, T minus 2, is that also, now look at it, T2 minus minus 2, that means your B equals to what, just big M minus 1, so this is your B, B is M minus 1, so you have to take time to solve a lot of questions, let's do one more before now I told you this class is going to be long, so just um, bear with me. So we are going to still do YouTube of it, so tan y t equals to tan y t. So um, in this sense, Uh, what we call now because of time y t what is um the dimension of y you don't need to know what b is okay why because i said any trig any trig guys any trig the dimension is is dimensionless why what i mean dimension is one that is m o l o t o 
So in this case now, you know that this M of L is equal to U. That means your B will also be. For this case, if we don't get anything here, that means your B is also dimensionless. Because if B equals to tan yt and tan yt is self dimensional, that means your B is dimensionless. So you need to know that. So I can say what is B. So B is what? M O L O T O. Can you see what I'm saying? Now, let me just iterate again. Let me clean it up. B equals to tan yt. What is the dimension of B? Simple. What is the dimension of B, guys? Treat function dimension dimension is what m not l not t not and based on our dimensional rule the left hand side must be equal to the right hand side so your dimension of b is what m not l not t not simple as abc now if i say what's the dimension of y now what's the dimension of y everything has to be one of course that's what one that means Tan, we don't use tan, sorry, forget about tan. So yt, let me just say, let me just do it the way it should be. Okay, mc has to be 1. I can say, what will cancel t to make it 1? That means your y, your y equals to what? t minus 1. Because y has to cancel t to make it what? 1. So that means, if your y is t minus 1 times t, that's what? 1. Or you can just do it this way and say, since everything here is m0, so x here is m0 because it's dimensionless. s0, t0, okay? Equals what? y, yt. Okay? So, m0, l0, t0, over big T equals to what? y. So, M0, L0. So your Y So your Y your Y will not be M0 okay L0 T minus 1. So m0 is 1, so you can see your y is t minus 1. So you can do it this way, or shortcut is just anything that you multiply with this t to make it what? 1. That means your y is what? t minus 1. So that's another way of doing it. So let's look at another one. p equals to a r square s. So now we have to look for the dimension of s. Look for the dimension of s. Look for the dimension of s given that r given that r is radius okay in this case some people will ask that what is the dimension of p you're not giving and you don't need it so remember i told you that any dimension of a square is what dimension of square is what dimensionless because you can't just say theory is to power two newton does it make sense so everything square is what square is dimensionless always dimensionless so in this case now in this case what you do here is simple you just say that your r square s was what m not L not T not because it's dimensionless. Okay, so your S equals to M not L not T not over what? What's the R? R is in length. So it does is length. That means L square. So your S equals to M not L not T. Sorry. M not L minus two T not or you can say your S 
equals to L minus 2. If they say you should do it in, do it in theory to get full mark, this is how you do it. But if it's MCQ, remember I said something dimensionless, the quantity has to be what? It has to be 1. Okay, it has to be 1. So what will you use to multiply R square that will make this this quantity to be 1? Since R is L square, so you have to make it, well, multiply it with what? L minus 2 times L minus 2. We give you what? 1. That means 2 minus 2. Like in indices, it will be L2 minus 2. That's L is what? 0. Anything is about 0 is what? 1. So you just get L minus 2. But you can do it this way if you want to do it this way. So um, the next class, we'll be going to how to derive formula using homogeneity. It's very important. Under aspect, they can ask questions. This one is simple. Anyway, let me just do it. They say f equals to m s l y t z. So they now say if s is false, f is false. It's simple. This one is simple. Just I just want to show you so that under the answer question, if s is false, what is s y z? I know that f equals to what. M L T minus what two. So your S is one, your L is one, so your Y is one, and your Z is what? Minus two. So this is just very simple. They can ask you in this way. So that's that's the end of the